Sunken beneath the shimmering waves of an idyllic lake, this once prosperous town now lays forgotten. Eroded by the passing of ages, all that remains are sparse reminders of memories long past. Today, we explore the shallow depths of Atlantis, here on Eisenholm. Hey everybody, how's it going? You just caught me in the middle of a casual swim in some ruins. We have made our way a decent bit down south. So our home and our farm that we started last episode is right over here. And we came all the way down here. I spotted some ruins on the map, so went and checked them out. Grabbed ourselves a little bit more uh, conglomerate cobblestone. And then saw something weird off in the distance. Came down here. And we've got something. It looks almost like there was, I don't know, a tree growing out of this building, or maybe some of it's petrified and turned to stone. I'm not too sure exactly what's going on here. But there's ancient wood, or aged wood, so I'll take it. Uh, we've also got a little vessel down there, and my inventory's getting a little full, but we'll figure it out. After plundering the sunken ruins and gathering up as many resources as I could carry, I made my way back home, marking another small ruin on the way back. Upon returning home, I expanded the footprint of our little farmhouse a bit to allow room for a small dining area beside a recessed alcove for our future staircase. While building up the walls and putting in some framing, however, we were rudely interrupted by an incoming temporal storm, which we promptly slept through. After preparing a hearty breakfast of porridge with cranberries, and going on a weird little... tangent. When was the last time you had a cranberry? When was the last time a cranberry had you? <gasps> yeah, I don't know either. Anyway, I set out to gather a couple more types of tree seeds to expand our wood color options, along with more building material blocks from the surrounding ruins. Storage was becoming an ever-pressing issue, so after another trip back home, I began preparing the things we would need for fully getting into the Copper Age. For all of the materials we're going to need for decoration, uh, we'll need a chest. Well, several, really. With our molds firing, the journey to the mines began. Only to promptly fall down a hole. It was a strange blessing in disguise, however, as mere steps into this subterranean cavern laid something that would come in handy in the weeks to come. A lava source. I'll need basalt for some of the chiseling plans I have, and with a lava source this close to home, setting up a basalt-making facility to have a readily available source couldn't be more welcome. After marking the location on the map, I was once again on my way. One quick mining expedition later, our first haul of copper was acquired. Not a little, not a lot, but just the right amount for our currently meager storage capacity. Checking out a shallow looking cavern on the way back, I discovered what appeared to be the ruins of a children's bedroom. Inside were some clothes, a crate with a small amount of poor hematite chunks, and a couple other odds and ends. Completely useless, only decorative. I just like the way they look. I mined out the tin deposit we'd found during our first harrowing night and set out to work casting some copper tools and skipping a copper anvil entirely in favor of tin bronze. We won't have to upgrade this baby until we get to steel. And that brings us to today. Once this pit kiln is finished firing, we're going to have ourselves a couple of ingot molds. We can fill those guys with copper, maybe tin bronze. We still have a little bit left over after the anvil. And we're going to make our very first saw. Then we can have all the chests we'll ever need. We'll have storage. Glorious. Ah, too close. Glorious storage. And once we've got the storage all settled, I have something that I've been saying I'm going to do for several episodes now that we might actually do. Let's see if you can guess what it is before the big reveal. Boy, here we go. Let those babies cool. 
Put our anvil in place in the middle of the house. We gotta heat up our ingots here. So one of these is going to be used to make a saw. And the other is going to be used to make a chisel. I'm just doing copper for now. I'm going to save the uh, the tin just until a little bit later. Ooh, this one's ready. I'm going to have to be careful making chisels because we've got this rough cut chisel from the quarry mod, I believe. But this regular chisel, that's what we're going to want. Are you ready to hear one of the most satisfying sounds in the world? There we go. Our first saw. Uh, previously, we uh, turned the last of our logs into firewood, so I'm going to have to go cut down some trees. And even though it's dark out there, it's a calm night, so we should be okay. I'll see you in a moment. All right. Yeah. And a saw. And we've got ourselves some planks. And there we go. Eight chests. That's going to help get us started off. And we still got a half a stack, so we could theoretically make more if we had more nails and strips. But I have a particular spot in mind for where these chests are going to live. At least the first few of them. So, in our kitchen here... We're going to have cabinetry along here. A little stove here, a little bit more cabinetry, maybe a sink as well. And underneath each of the cabinets, I'm going to hide storage. Because for some reason, there's nothing that I love more than hidden function to the form. So right along here under the window, we've got three spots. And we're just going to have... Three of our chests under there. This is a corner cabinet. It won't really be accessible. It'll be a little tabletop. These two, we're going to have little campfires inside of a stove. Also, with a hidden little slot behind the handle so we can still access to use cooking pots. But, right beside it here, here, and I believe right here, yeah, these three other spots as well. These are all going to be hidden storage. Now, the one complication that I see with this is I do want to have the cabinets kind of recessed in by a couple of voxels here. So when I'm chiseling them in, which means there may be a small gap shown here. So we're going to have to figure that out. I don't know if we can reach down by two... Okay, we still can. So, I think that might be the call then. There we go. And then I can have a little lip on the ground to meet up with the floor that we're going to put in here. And that way, only from behind the handle will we have a tiny little gap to see and interact with the chests. That way, it's almost like the drawers and the cabinets are actually functional. It'll make a lot more sense once we've got everything actually in place. Ooh, those crops are looking like they're coming in. Now, I was able to harvest those turnips, at least the first one that we planted, because they only have five growth stages, so that one was done far sooner. Everything else is coming along nicely. We're at stages four and five. This is only medium fertility soil, so we are losing a good bit of speed. Not that one for some reason that's got good uh, good potassium but some of these are a little low on their nutrients which means the next ones we will have to rotate over to here so in the meantime we're just going to place a couple chests here 
and get some of this extra stuff out of our inventory. Now you might have noticed I have rope in here. Now whatever could that be for? <laughs> well, well, well. Let me tell you. You know that thing that every episode I've been saying I need to do? Like that very important thing that every episode I'm like, oh, I should probably do this thing. We're gonna do the thing today. Now if you guessed that today we're making a raft, you're a winner. And we also are going to need an oar. Beautiful. Because today we're going on a little bit of an excursion out into the wild to go look for a couple different rock types that I'm going to want for chiseling, especially for this kitchen. So we're on the hunt for two very important things. Claystone and Chert. Probably two of my favorite rock types in the entire game. I just like the warm tones. It's going to make the kitchen feel nice and inviting. Plus, we're going to have, hopefully, eventually, brown clay brick on the back wall just behind me here that the ore is pointing at. And that's where we're going to put our ovens. So we're going to also need to find some fire clay while we're out. For our cabinets, I'm thinking stripped pine logs with a hardened blue clay countertop to sort of give a pseudo granite countertop, but with a cooler blue color rather than a, well, just another variation of gray like we're going to have for the walls. Which reminds me, I still need to texture up those walls. We'll get to that when we're doing the whole build. As for what directions we're going to go, I'm thinking we're going to stick to some pretty simple directions here. I'm not going to do any crazy diagonals or anything quite yet. Let's just try starting with north. It goes into shale here, and I see what looks like very likely sandstone over there. So it looks like there's a few variations. So I see the tip of another bit of landmass there. So let's go check that out. And then if we don't find anything good that way, maybe we'll head down south because it does kind of keep going. And the grass changes here. That's something that might be the same as what we already have up here and around where... Uh, there's the blue clay. Where was... I think somewhere around here? This was the ruins that we uh, uncovered at the beginning of the episode. So we'll do some north and south. And then after that, if we don't find anything there, east and west. Yeah. Now before we head out, we could wait for our onions to finish growing here. Make some turnip and onion stew. However... We've got quite a few berries, and they're not going to last that long. Some of these only have, you know, a couple days left. Uh, these ones are only good for 14 hours, so I think we're just gonna we're just gonna take our berries and forage for food along the way. Let our crops finish growing. The onions should be ready. Some of the other crops over there might also be ready by the time we come back. So I'm going to wait until morning because it's already 4.30 in the afternoon on this day. And if we set out at first light, we'll have a better chance of being able to see what's around us, especially if we're looking out for different rock types in, say, cliff faces similar to this one. So I'm just going to do a little bit of busy work for the evening. And in the morning, I'll see you all at the shoreline as we set sail. Berries and boat in hand. Let's get on with this adventure. I should have built one of these ages ago. This is great. So, our goal once again is whatever the tip of this little continent here is. So, we're going to head probably through this little passage here. Take a quick peek at the northern side of our island. Every time I look at this, I think it's a dinosaur, but now that I'm looking at it, it kind of looks like a Pokemon. Welcome to Saul Says What, presented by Saul Says What. Well, most say don't risk it, 
but I would say risk it for the biscuit, or it ain't worth it. Diablo, you were grown from a seed of evil, while this onion was grown from a seed of onion. I wonder, would I cry if I were to cut you open like this onion? Simon says, but he does not speak. Anakin, did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. It's not a tumor. Come with me if you want to live. What is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentations of their women. Boy, I sure could go for some Tims there, eh? Oh, sorry, I meant stew. Stay in character, Saul. Ah, it must have been the wind. Ooh, looking oh so much, eh? Well, it just so happens your friend here is only mostly dead. There's a big difference between mostly dead and all dead. Please open his mouth. For a number of years now, work has been proceeding in order to bring perfection to the crudely conceived idea of a transmission that would not only supply inverse reactive current for use in unilateral phase detractors, but would also be capable of automatically synchronizing cardinal grammeters. Such an instrument is the turbo encabulator. Here we see the lone survivor making his way across a vast stretch of ocean. Through the ingenuity of the early hominids, he has fashioned himself a raft. Unlike modern humans, this early hominid is comprised of a blocky musculature. Tell me, for whom do you fight? Hmm, how very glib. And do you believe in Eorzea? I'm the trash man. I come out, I throw, I throw trash all over the ring, and then I start eating garbage, and then I pick up the trash can, and I... Bash the guy on the head. In order to ensure the security and continued stability, the Republic will be reorganized into the first galactic empire for a safe and secure society. This has been Soul Says What, presented by Soul Says What. If you would like your submission to be read, Comment down below with the hashtag, Soul Says What. First thing we see, fire clay. Awesome, awesome. Good, good, good. And a couple more berries. But we haven't lost as much hunger as I thought we might on the trip here, so we're still okay. Let's go for two stacks just to be on the safe side. Because I can't remember off the top of my head how much it takes per clay oven. Just shy of two stacks. Should be good. We do have it marked. We can always come back if we need it. I'm hoping that almost two stacks should be enough for three ovens. Let's see. I thought... Ah, ah I thought I saw some brown around this side. I was thinking it might just be uh, more dirt. But we do have uh, the tiniest sliver of shirt here. We've got chalk, granite, limestone, chert, bauxite, and shale. So let's relieve these rocks. Now for everybody unfamiliar, relieving rocks is basically just making sure nothing is touching it on any of its faces. And then you just separate it. And that's how you get an actual rock. Otherwise, you just get the little stones. If I could find a large amount... That would make this quite a bit easier. And this is the main reason why I brought a chest along with us. So we can store all of our extra things, uh, including we'll put the raft in there for the time being. And we're very likely going to pick up a lot of those same rocks if we find any more chert in the area, so I'm not too concerned about that for the moment. Oh, I spot more chert. Oh, this is a decent bit more. Okay. Ah, there is more behind here. It's still interspersed with other rocks, but... It could be worse. This could take a while. I'll see you when we're done with this vein.
Okay. One pickaxe and uh, a lot of digging later. There's still a couple pieces here and there. I don't know how much there is in there, but I've got a stack of relieved chert rocks, so I think that's going to be good enough for uh, this little area. Uh, but this chest on my back is mighty full, so I think let's sail right on back home, drop it off, and probably head south. Because it seems like this is mostly chert up here, well, apart from a billion different rock types. But let's go see if we can find anything different down south. Ooh, more chert, okay. So there's plenty interspersed throughout this area. And there's cornflowers here. I'm gonna mark that for when we need decor. Okay, let's take a look at the hall we got here. Accidentally somehow uh, relieved a chalk rock, but we've got that stack of chert rock here and a whole bunch of assorted rocks. We got chalk, shale, more chert. Uh, I feel like, yep, there's some limestone, a little bit of bauxite, and some granite. I tried to avoid the granite as much as possible because it's... We're probably not going to need a lot of it. But I'd say that's a fairly good haul. We do have this other chest here, and we can probably bring that along for the journey south. We should grab a little bit more food. We're going to run low on berries here, I think. Our crops are coming along nicely. Everything here is almost done. Which means... Let's go take a look if that farm is ready. Those onions were just about done when we set out. And we've been gone for about a day or so. Ooh, things are looking like they're coming along, and it looks like all the onions are ready. All right. Dropped a couple onions down below. 48 onions from just a few seeds. That is fantastic. And what are we looking at for the spelt? We're looking at eight and sevens for some of the flax. Okay. So that's going to be ready probably in the next couple days. But 48 onion. Oh, we're doing great. Let's uh, let's take these six onion seeds and let's go plant them in the wrong direction. That direction. Plant them in our proper big old farm. Yes, I am likely going to always say farm as farm. It's the Canadian in me. Let's just plant these little guys right here. There we go. So our onions are good for 28 days in our inventory. And if we pop them in here, 1.3 years. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're... We're good. Let's take a little bit of our vegetables here and let's make ourselves a bit of a meal. All right, came back to the farmhouse just to drop off a couple things here, get rid of those extra loose stones so we can clear out as much inventory space as possible. I am really pale when I get into the sun. Anyway, we've got ourselves a nice meal here of uh, onion and turnip stew. So let's mosey on down south. I think this might involve a little bit more walking than sailing. Let's check the map. A little bit of a sail there that we can do, but for the most part... Going down south, we're going to want to skirt around this area. It's very mountainous. So we'll probably... Huh. Wait a minute. Is that... Let's check out that area there. We'll put a little, uh, little star pin there. Let's give it a nice gold star. That looks like the color of claystone. I'm not 100% certain. Let's go see, because if so, that's far larger of a supply than what we're going to need. But let's get on the road. I guess uh, get, get on the boat would be a more apt saying. It's a much shorter boat ride across this little lake here than it was the big massive ocean. So we're not going to have quite as long of a 
segment here. Look out. Almost ran him off the road. Let's just torture ourselves while we have no money and see if he's got any clay bricks, brown ones specifically. He does. And we don't have any money to buy them with. So that ruin of a children's bedroom that I had found earlier, I haven't actually taken anything from it yet. Mainly because when I found it, my inventory was completely full. And I had forgotten to put any sort of storage on my back to increase my storage capacity, otherwise... I probably could have taken those clothes. So I think after we check out this area down here... Hello, goat! After we check out this area, see if there's any claystone there, or if that's just something else that shows up as a similar-ish looking color on the map. Then we can come back, loot that bedroom for the clothes, and see what kind of outfit we can throw together. I think I remember seeing an alchemist apron. There was uh, some kind of pair of pants. They were tan. I don't know if I'd wear those pants. I, I kind of like the uh, more... What is this, like... Under the apron here, I think it's kind of like overalls or something. They're, they're a little bit more... Drab color. I don't know. The yellow ones, we'll see how they look. Uh, there was also like a cloak or a shawl type of thing. Potentially with a hood. That could be neat. Switch things up. I think that takes the same slot as the apron, though. So we'll... We'll have to make a few concessions, most likely. Ah, <gasps> uh -huh, what do we have here? Some mature turnip. Don't mind if I do. Do you have any friends here? Or did they not spawn in? Weird, okay. One lone little patch of turnip. Ooh. Okay. <gasps> Carrots. Okay, let's risk it. None of them are fully grown. There we go. Got some seeds anyway. Haha. -ha. Three seeds? That should get us off to a good start if they grow anything like onions. Oh boy, were those plentiful. Now I am getting some frame rate issues down here. I think it's because we've uncovered a decent chunk of the map today. So it's having to load a lot of new areas. Now that was a known issue. I suppose it hasn't been patched. Where if you're traveling a lot, um, unlocking a whole bunch of spots on the map, or just playing for a long time in general, sometimes it can impact your performance here. And then you'd have to restart the game. I think I saw a bear through the woods there. It's either that or a King Crimson Maple, which is basically just a maple with red leaves. Which I probably should, as any good Canadian, uh, grab one of those at some point. <gasps> Claystone Gravel. Oh, happy day, we are in Claystone territory. I was correct. Oh, there's Claystone as far as the eye can see. This is beautiful. Alright, one reload later, and we are good to go. I don't need a huge amount of claystone, and I'm glad there's not a lot of sand here. So I'm just going to create a little area here where we're going to do the checkerboard method and dig a whole bunch of this stuff out. Low rift activity night, this might go bad. Hopefully it doesn't. Don't want to be sad. Drifters stay away from me before I hack and cry. Cause if you all come for me, I surely will then die. Okay, I could keep going. But I'm pretty sure if my math is correct, I only need 20 clay stones. So I have 22. That should do for at least for the kitchen project. Let's make our way back home and try on a few clothes along the way from that ruin. We'll just see if we can find anything else along the way here. Going the eastern side of the mountain, we are uh, definitely finding red currants. And a cave, which I will not be exploring right now. We probably will... Ooh. Okay, this is shallow. Let's, uh, let's take a quick little peek. Just see if there's anything in here worth looking for. 
Oh, dead end. But after we've done a little bit of building and we've gotten ourselves a little bit better established, I don't like this. Huh? No. Oh, that's nothing. Uh, ah. Well, we found sulfur down there, but uh, also some boys. Oh no. Which way's up? This way's up. And yeah, maybe we don't. Uh, maybe we don't go exploring caves right now, huh? As I was saying, at some point in the future, ooh, we will try to take a look at some of the caves that are around, especially the ones under our house. Um, my uh, big old death pit cave that I died in on that first night, one day we will traverse it. And we will conquer it. We'll see what's down at the bottom and if it's... see if it's worth exploring. Ooh, turnips. Is it just one lone turnip once again? No, it's not. It's got turnip friends. They've turned up. Oh, man. More turnips. I think I already have one or two turnip seeds in the, um, in the chest on my back, so... This is, this is Turnip Valley over here. Okay. And there's more. Oh, I should have come this way at the beginning. I could have been flush with turnips. Would have done great on Sundays in Animal Crossing. T more turnips. Let's take a quick peek down in this, see if there is anything. A little weirdly eroded. <gasps> Borax! Okay, okay. I have to mark this, because this is going to be very important. Ah. And we're going to get the heck out of here. Didn't have time to grab the Y coordinate, but I'll know that it was underground. Borax is one of those things that I also, similar to Halite, have never actually been able to find in a world. It was very annoying. The uh, server that I played on, we spent, oh, at the very least, a week, maybe more, hunting. Searching every single day for just a, a hint, a whiff of borax. Even something to come up just on the prospecting pick. Nothing. Nada. We scoured 10,000 blocks in every single direction. Not a hint of borax. So the fact that I uh, found it the way it's supposed to be, you know, existing, is great. I wonder what's down underground here. Is there going to be a basement? Uh, there is. Okay, okay, not a whole lot. Bandages? Alright, I'll take bandages. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate. I guess they don't always drop. Okay, so that is the ruined bedroom over there, so let's head on over. I can always plop down a chest once we get down in there and put away some of the extra things that we have in our inventory here. Was it down this way? I don't think it... Oh. Okay. Well, this wasn't the ruin I was looking for. There's dirt right there. There's a nice easy access point. I'm, I'm not going to complain about this. This is great. Uh, we got a couple empty crates. Those could be handy. Anything in there? A couple of gears. Malachite. All right. Pop away some of our extra stuff here. Yeah, we are 100%. Taking those gears. Those are going to come in handy. I'm going to mark this right here. You know what? We'll do this little teal color for the time being. Kind of one of the closest we can get to a uh, temporal gear. And linen. Collapsed bed. Why can't you be an aged bed? I would very much like an aged wooden bed. Alright, with that located, 
Let's go down to the actual ruins. I don't think... I don't think that connects. It might, but it's probably a different tunnel. Let's find that original tunnel. It was pretty shallow. Yeah, this looks right. Okay. Let's take a look. So we got a hooded cape. I'll take a copper axe, yeah. Bronze bracelet. Dirty linen trousers and an alchemist apron. Alright. Shall we see... There's some more gears. Guess I could have taken the other flax twine, but that's fine. Now... Will I get the pot sherds? Or will they be lost forever when I break them? Only time will tell. <gasps> I got my pot sherds. I don't know why, I really like them as a decorative piece. Not sure where I'm going to put them. And whenever I find a spot, I'm going to have to make sure to not break them. Uh, let's see. Uh-oh. So that might be a mod causing that to happen. So I'm just not going to touch that crate. It can stay there. And... Okay. The pot sherds are back. As are the clothes. Interesting. I'm just going to leave this place alone. This is a cursed bedroom, and I'm not a fan of it. But you know what? Let's, let's not look a gift horse in the mouth. Do we have the... Uh, give, me, give me those gears again. Don't tell anyone that I took the accidentally glitch-duped rusty gears. Got an extra seven. And we are back home. All right, let's pop that down. Take the chest off our backs. Pop that on the ground here. So from this run, we got a lot of seeds. And some turnips. I should probably put those down in the basement. And yeah, we packed this for eating on the way. Let's have a celebratory we just got back home bite to eat. Mmm. So, let's take a look at some of the new items that we got here. We've got a hooded cape. That takes place of our apron, and it's... It's okay. Not a major fan of it. What about these trousers? Definitely not. Bronze bracelet? We got nothing better to do. Let's, uh, let's keep that on. What about this alchemist apron? So this is what uh, Professor Chert McGirt wears in Temporal Institute. I don't think it fits the, the feel for this character. So I think we're, we'll pop on the bracelet, but I don't think we're going to really wear any of these. The hooded cape is... It's okay? It's a little weird. I don't think it goes with, like, the overalls. That looks pretty okay, though. Alright, I think we have most of what we're going to need to get this kitchen underway. Not everything to complete it. Not yet. There'll be a couple more resource runs for that. We're going to need lead, uh, brown clay bricks, quite a few, which we can get some now that we have a few rusty gears. We're going to need to build a corn so that we can grind up some of that chalk and limestone rocks that we've gathered. And then... We can plaster the ceiling, so we've got a nice, bright, white roof to uh, bounce off some light. Speaking of light, might have to do some panning for some candles, because I want a couple of lanterns lighting up the kitchen, making it all nice and bright and shiny and fancy. But I am definitely getting ahead of myself. There's a lot to do. We have to do the floors and start doing a little bit of chiseling. So, I think I'm going to get to a little bit of farming between the episodes. And at the start of the next episode, we might just be ready if I prep right for a bit of a building montage and some chiseling. We're going to get into some detail work finally. Well, I hope you're all as excited as I am for that because I cannot wait to get back into chiseling. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time when we chisel. How are you all doing? Six out of nine. Nice.